right, hey guys. Um, welcome to a surprise uh, live chat on a uh, Friday afternoon. And uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring on John Schaefer and I'll explain what we're doing here in just a second. But um, there he is. Okay, hey John. Um, so probably once or twice a week, John and I um, do a live or a FaceTime with each other just to kind of get caught up talk about, you know, how our week was, any challenges, you know, whatnot, things like that. And sometimes it's pretty funny and sometimes it's not, but we just thought rather than just FaceTime between ourselves, we would just do one uh, live and just see what happens. So if this yeah, gets- Sometimes painful, we call each other back apologizing for being <laughs> jerks. Exactly. So if, this, if this turns out to be not so entertaining, it may get taken down, right? So if you guys happen to be online and jumping into this while it's actually live, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have just as they come up. So it's not a it's not a planned live. John and I were actually just talking five minutes ago and said, hey, let's just let's just do this, right? So, um, and one of the things was, is that John has kind of done what I've done for the last now 60 days, which is kind of go on a carnivore experiment on himself. And we, because we're both so busy, we haven't actually had a chance to sit down and talk about how that's gone, you know, the, the mm -hmm. details of it, the challenges he's might have, you know, might have faced, or, you know, just, you know, how it's working for him. Um, real quick, just, we've got a lot of new members and I uh, want to welcome you all and thank you for being here. Uh, John and I literally are best friends all the way since second grade. So we've known, he, we're like brothers. And uh, I actually went to high school with his wife. So obviously I missed out there too. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> a good thing for you, exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was just over a year ago that we were talking about doing a Facebook group and John uh, is always the kind of guy who just, hey, let's get it done. And he said, hey, what was the name of that group you were thinking about starting? I told him and it was like 10 o'clock, I was at work. Nobody, he doesn't ever call me at work. And he called me back 10 minutes later and goes, hey, by the way, your group's live, you better put something up, right? So uh, do you remember that? You know I mean, it was mm -hmm. like right off of that. I'm like, holy crap, I better uh, go find some articles or some videos to put up. So um, so John is uh, one of the co-administrators in the group, and uh, you'll see him post. And he just recently posted today about um, hitting a, a specific weight goal um, or a weight milestone because it's not really a goal. John, yeah. like me, doesn't necessarily have a weight goal. We have a fitness goal. And um, anyway, so... Enough of this intro stuff because this is supposed to be impromptu and I'm, I'm turning into Arizona Dave and I'm not trying to be, I'm not. I'm gonna um, pretend like you just called me. Yeah, so uh, hey, yeah, Dave. only you'd be like this normally, right? So, <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, that's right, I got this wrong. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly, that's the view I'm used to more. So, um, okay, so right. it's been what, three or four weeks and you and you decided just, hey, I'm gonna tr try this carnivore thing, see what happens, is that is that kind of where we we're picking up? Yeah, you did it, and I was in the, I was already about a year of doing keto, and I hit it hard and strong in the beginning, and uh, eventually just, I don't know, just, it's like I learned it, and it's like lost a lot of weight. I probably got down to about this weight where I'm at right now, just doing keto, mm -hmm. um, but I was up and down. It's like, it was sort of like, you know, I would cheat on the weekends, hit it hard and steady for the week and cheat a little bit on the weekends. And that's an old mentality that I had um, from other diets I used to do. I was able to have a cheat day and then still lose weight and everything. But it, I, I, I'd sneak in a little more of this and sneak in a little more of that. Next thing I know, I weighed myself one day. And I'm like, I'm heavier again. God dang it. You know, and you just started doing carnivore. And it wasn't until the very end, we didn't talk much during that time, but uh, I don't know if it was a live that you did or a Facebook, oh, I think it was a Facebook, or not Facebook, uh, FaceTime chat. Mm -hmm. Just after you hit the 30 days, I can see it in your face. I think you lost like 10 pounds, another 10 mm -hmm. pounds yeah, or something. Like that, yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, dude, yeah, that, that actually kicked it up a notch right there, you know, and, and then you uh, went and saw Dr. Barry. And just hearing the stories on there got me motivated. And it's like, yeah. okay, I, I really want to do this. I need to really get going on it. So I tried it. And I'm, I think Monday, if I remember right on the calendar, I think that ends up being the four weeks. That'll be my month. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I'm right about where you were. I didn't weigh myself in the beginning. 
Um, and then later on, I kind of, whenever I did jump on a scale, went, okay, I'm at like 192 or something like that, you know. Right. And so now I've dropped off the 10 pounds just like you did. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually hit 179 this morning. So for right. probably a good six months, I've been seeing bouncing between 180-something and 190-something. I was always right in there. And it's like, yeah. finally. Yeah, and you ping pong. And, I, and I've and i done that for a long time. And carnivore seems to have helped with me. Um, the other thing I, I have done is kind of put the scale away. I mean, literally, I have it, like, tilted up in the corner of my bathroom where I can't just walk on it in the morning. You know, like, I want to see. Um, because I just want to feel other stuff besides the weight, you know, because it's, you know, you're at 179, but you're, you know, you don't have the abs you want yet, right? Right. So the weight really doesn't matter. It's about how we look, how we feel, and the fitness level is is, and that's kind of what I'm going for. I want to be back in the shape I was when I was doing this water scheme back here. Oh, we're back. Yeah. Here, you know. So when I were doing all this, um, I want to be back in that shape. I don't care what weight that is. It doesn't matter. You know, I happen to ski at 200 to 203 pounds. That's just the way I'm built. You know, um, and um, if that if I feel and look and, you know, I'm happy at 210, I'll be fine with that. If I have to go all the way to 190 because I don't have the muscular, you know, the muscle build that I had back then, then it's 190. I really don't care. I have a goal of how I feel, look, and then things I'm able to do. And uh, so it's important and it's cool that John is, is measuring, but he also, somebody in that post asked him, what's your goal weight, your target weight? And he says, I don't know, I don't have one. And, yeah, uh, I mean, my only basis is all through high school, I was still this tall, but I was 150 pounds. I was a pretty skinny kid. I was like my son, JC. Yeah, you were always a fast dude. You nobody could catch you on the playground and all that stuff, right? So, so I'm assuming that okay, if I happen to have that same muscle structure from when I was in high school, I have no idea if I've built any muscle since then. But yeah. you know, now I'm kind of an old man, so it's like. Uh, well, and also, you know, 50 is where I want to be. I have no idea. I've talked to you about this, and it's it's a struggle with me. Is you know when the scale's not moving, you know we are eating a lot of fat and protein. We're putting on muscle whether we're working at it or not. You yeah. know, and you saw that picture I put up about the volume difference of fat and, and uh, um, of fat and uh, and muscle. muscle. Yeah, and so you lose this much fat, and you put on that much muscle, but the scale doesn't move. And so people get frustrated with that. Looks like Agnes joined us. Hey, Agnes, uh, nice to see you. Thanks for uh, popping in. This is, I don't know if you caught it from the beginning, but we are just doing kind of an impromptu chat that uh, John, who helped me start this group and is my best friend, um, we just decided to share what we normally do on a Friday afternoon in the group to see what happened. Um, so, you know, like I said, I put the scale up. I, I don't even, I don't, you know, now I've never really gotten into weights and measurements. I don't tell people what I weigh, what I started at. I've said I've lost X number of pounds, but I think this is going to be important. And it's, and I'm going to share some personal information with everybody that I've never shared before. But um, when I started doing, uh, and I started at low carb and then migrated to keto. So I did lose some weight on low carb, but in this journey, this time I had gotten so out of control that uh, the pants I wore were a snug 46 inches. Okay. And that's, that's big. I mean, I'm, I'm buying in the big man's department at that point, you know, which I really didn't want to do. Um, I realized um, when I got home from work and I changed um, now I'm down six inches. So the shorts I have on right now, a 40 inch waist and I don't care what I weigh, but now these 40 inch waist shorts are loose. So, yeah. I'm, you know, when I was in shape and I was fit, I wore, I had about a 36 to 35, depending on, you know, depending on, you know, what, you know, what was going on in my life at that time. And you got to remember, I was also in my mid thirties back then. And um, so it's a little bit different story now that I'm 50. God, I said that out loud. And you remember when we were kids? Going, can you imagine being in our 50s? We'll probably live in Sun City and drive golf carts. And, you know, can you even imagine us doing that? I mean, we're not in Sun City, but. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, um, so, so, again, I, you know, I don't know what I weigh right now, but I know that my 40 inch um, pants are getting loose. And can uh, you, hey, go put on those 40 inch pants and see what they look like. 
No, I'm wearing the 40 inch pants. So, I mean, oh, it I is. Mean the, uh, what were oh, you wearing? Oh, I forget what oh, the 46s? Yeah, no, yeah. I, nah, 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 I don't even think I want to go. I might be one of those pictures later if I hit the 36 mark again. You know, here, here's what I used to, you know, wear. Um, but uh, so it's not about the weight. But now, okay, let's go back to the carnivore thing because I felt oh, yeah. I, I like, you know, when I, and I've talked about it before that. Um, you know, when I kind of really got serious about, you know, low carbon keto, I, I found that, you know, I really, really enjoyed my vegetables. I liked my greens and my broccoli and, you know, all that stuff. So I was concerned when I started my 30 day experiment that I would find it boring or I would just, you know, not, I would crave the vegetables. And I think that lasted for two or three days. And like right now I have a big ribeye, which are on sale at Albertsons. If you're in the Phoenix area right now, guys, uh, bone in for five seventy seven a pound. Um, I, I just felt like I would just find myself I'm craving meat and if I got a giant steak and I and I did a video a little while back on just the feeling of full where your mind just shuts off you don't you're not stuffed but it's like I don't want to eat anymore well if I had three or four ounces of steak left on the plate that got chopped up and mixed into my scrambled eggs in the morning and so it was eggs and steak in the morning and so it wasn't a lot of variety but that those were the things that my body was craving because I conditioned it excuse me to uh to uh, do those things. So um, that's my story. Now that I, now that I, when I finished my 30 days of strict carnivore, I added so like um, last weekend, I made one of my favorite things, which is like a um, ground beef and cabbage uh, soup kind of a thing. And it just lasted me all weekend. And it was oh. real quick. I could heat it up and eat it. And so I had some cabbage with my uh, ground beef. Do you beef. have that recipe online? I don't have that online yet. Would you like that? I'll put that online. That'll yeah. That'll be a good, but it's an awesome soup and it can last you like all week. Um, and unfortunately, I had to give half of it to my dad because I don't know how to make a small amount of soup. I always make these giant stock pots full of soup and it's like, there's no way I'm going to eat all this before it goes bad. <laughs> you know, I know I could freeze it. but um, So what was your experience when you just started on that conversion to carnivore, especially after doing your cheating, you know, being a little kind of loose on the reins? Uh, did you have any cravings? You know, what was that kind of thing like? And um, it looks like we have a few people online that happen to be around and join us. If you guys say hi, um, if you do have a question about what John and I are talking about, please just pop it in and we'll try to get to it. But uh, how, what was your experience like, at least like the first week? Did you feel anything different? Um, the first week, I don't know if you remember, but we had some, uh, uh, we had some conversations that, uh, I'll just say it, say it like it is. You are frustrating me. <laughs> I was uh, oh, I I I you pissing you off. You know that. I I I'm the machinist, and I need to measure. I have to have some sort of give me the blueprint oh, to start with. How like much you. meat do I have to eat? How much fat? That was like. <laughs> just so that was my first week. <laughs> I was just, I didn't want to mess up. I just wanted to make sure I was on the right path. You were right. It's like just eat till you're full, blah blah blah. Go. Right. And, yeah. Uh, so that was my first week. But on top yeah. of it, uh, I got about two weeks into it, and then I decided um, because I was hearing people talk about people who have been doing carnivore for a while, they 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 can stall too but they'll do things like they'll stop the dairy, the cheese or sweeteners. Right. And so for me, um, I do eat some, oh, I haven't since I've been carnivore, I don't think I've had any cheese, but sweeteners, I've always used sweeteners. I've always had a sweet tooth. I stopped the sweeteners and uh, I even stopped alcohol. I'm not a big, huge drinker, but on the weekends, you know, it's 115 oh. here. Having a beer at the pool is nice. And, uh, but that would, put me in a stall so i decided to just just be strict carnivore just go for it see what happens yeah and uh, yeah, i was the same way um you know we you know i mean john and i are old partiers from the 80s so um when we the words don't drink sound like another foreign language to us sometimes you know but uh um i found that just cutting it out during the week when i do have a uh you know a mick ultra or a cocktail on the weekend with a you know whatever. It's like, wow, I didn't enjoy that as much as I thought I would, you know? And so, um, 
it's, it's a good thing because obviously as we're getting older, we certainly don't want this thing to turn into a problem. But regardless of whether it's a problem or not, we're not talking about, you know, addiction here. We're talking about no. the second that the alcohol enters your system, whatever fat burning is going on, it stops because the, the body and the liver have to deal with that alcohol first. So you could be in full on ketosis, you drink, boom, you're out of ketosis for that, for as long as it takes to get that alcohol out of your system. Now, the good news is, unlike having carbs where it can take two to three days to recover from, as soon as the alcohol is gone, if you haven't ingested too many carbs with it, it goes right back to the fat. So, um, if, you know, I'll use that as an excuse, but that's the reality of oxidative priority. Big word. I learned that online. <laughs> um, so, what about, yeah, yeah. So two what about weeks in, missing vegetables, anything like that? You know, because I've been meaning to ask you about this stuff because I wanted to see. I found that I didn't miss them as nearly as much as I thought I would, and I also found yeah. that the longer I was on carnivore, the less I craved carbs. Now, my carb cravings were pretty much under control, but there would be days where no matter what I ate, I just didn't feel like. I was getting what I needed and it would be like, you know what I need is something and it would be something bad that would pop into my head. Um, but I found that with steak and eggs at, at breakfast and some, a burger patty at lunch and a big old ribeye at dinner, I, you know, I really wasn't wanting for anything. What was your experience? Yeah, like? Me neither. Um, I don't think I ever had, let's see, the worst craving I got, Yvonne's birthday was this week and we went to, took the family to Cheesecake Factory. Mm -hmm. And the that's uh, smart because there's a lot of, of bread. There's a lot. As that, that was smart. There's a lot of options there. Even though there's going to be a lot of bad stuff around you and in front of you, there are, in a place like Cheesecake Factory, there's a lot of things you can adapt to what you're doing. And I'm sure that's probably what you did. I hope so. Yeah, um, it was the first time I did kind of really struggle. Not a lot, but I mean a little bit. I did have a struggle. The the thing of bread came in, and I went. I mean, it looked really, really good. Mm -hmm. I was like, that, 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 oh, is that sourdough? No, I mean, like a of butter. So here's what I did. I, I, I took my butter knife and I got a little scoop of uh, butter, grabbed the, uh, the bread, smelled it, and ate the butter. <laughs> Can I fool myself? And I'll call it this. I'm like, nah, it didn't work. Oh, well. I don't want to talk to you or whatever. But. That was an awesome try, though. That's really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought, I'm on to something now. Yeah, yeah most, of most of taste is smell anyway. So maybe this bun will taste like bread. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I tried. The bread yeah, got me a little bit. And no, then, uh, when the Go ahead. I'm huh? sorry. Go ahead. When the, dessert when the desserts came along, there was a, uh, a caramel crispy thing. And I just went, oh, that's that's my thing right there. And I kind of looked at it and I said, hey, you know what? Ah, it looks really good. I just took a fork. It's like they teach you to take a fork, dip it in salad dressing and then grab the salad and eat it. I just oh, yeah. did that. I just dipped the fork. Went, I went, okay, I'm good with it. I've had my sweet, a little, little dash of it and went, yeah, I'm fine. I didn't do the, uh, I'm going to cave in and eat it and go, dang, I wish I hadn't have done that. So the cravings are bad for me. They're, they're manageable. Um, yeah. Even when I do crave, I'm just kind of, huh, I just kind of look at it, you know. The fact uh, that the even still pop up every now and then just tells us how strong that addiction is, right? So. Oh yeah. Something to talk say here. Um, I could totally enjoy this. Unfortunately, I'm the kidney stones. I left out. Yeah, definitely ask. Hey, Julie, ask Doctor Nally about that. But. Um, did you see the Dr. Berry video on kidney stones? It was an interesting, it was an interesting video, but if you haven't seen it, check that out on YouTube. Um, because it, the, the, the uh, hypothesis is that the kidney stones were there, but then as, but you've been keto for a long time, but let me just say this for everybody, that the kidney stones are there, but they're, they're too big to get through the duct. And then as you eat, um, cleaner and cleaner keto to carnivore, those kidney stones actually shrink to the point where they can get through the duct and that's, it's not until they move that you feel pain. That's his hypothesis. It's an interesting video. If you haven't seen it, look it up. Um, and if the other ones, um, anybody else watching has, hasn't seen it, it's, it's an interesting uh, topic. Um, but let me, um, 
on the carnivore thing, like, like I said, I'm not real strict. I had a green chili cheeseburger. I'm not sure I count green chilies as vegetables, though. I think those are needed for life, but um, especially like a seasoning, isn't it? Yeah, I think that, that that's considered a spice. And like okay, hey, um, rookies out there, because uh, I forgot. Some green chili, green chilies have a, a hatch chilies have a reputation for people who don't live where they grow of being a mild chili. Uh, they come mild and they also come blow your head off hot. And if you're not used to handling chilies with your hands, um, you either want to wear some gloves because the, it's an oil based, uh, the capsicum is an oil based substance and it doesn't really even want to wash off with soap. And so I made the rookie mistake of doing one of these the other day after handling my chilies and I had a red bloodshot. I felt like I basically tear gassed myself, you know, pepper sprayed myself. And, um, uh, it, you know, so don't touch your eyes or any other personal part that you don't want to burn. Oh yeah. Uh, I've experienced that. We had a Mary Yvonne's friend, uh, made some jalapeno poppers and was just cleaning them, rinsing water through them, but using her hands. And I remember doing that myself and going, oh, man, that's so painful. Mary, are you sure you don't want anything? You sure? No, 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 no. And I'm like, wow, I'm just, a, I'm just a wuss, you know. And she did the job and everything. But then after she was done, her hands were drying. She's like, ooh, my hands are hot. And well, it got worse it, and worse. It, it, and that poor it, girl, it, oh, my God. Yeah. And then if you do touch something that's more sensitive. But, yeah, you can actually even just burn your fingers. And the worst um, that I know of personally and uh, – it's our friend Kim who's in this group. So maybe she'll pop in and see this. Um, she did, she used to do these um, jalapeno popper things. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she finished doing that, washed up. I think it might have been the next morning. Put her contact in with her, you know. Uh -huh. So basically just touched, not only did she touch her eye, but she basically spread that oil all over the contact that she just put in her eye. Oh so um, yeah, that hurts. I've so, done it. Yep. We got a question here from Agnes. Um, what's the biggest mistake beginners do? So, um, you know. In carnivore or keto? I think probably keto in general, but um, okay. I think the biggest mistake for beginners is not counting um, your carbs, mm -hmm. just assuming that you know what's in stuff and how big a portion is. So in the beginning, you need to really measure weight and, uh, you know, a, a digital food scale on Amazon is like 10 bucks. Um, but what does four ounces of broccoli look like? What is four ounces of broccoli and four ounces of cabbage look completely different. And then, um, you know, knowing what a serving size is, those are big. And then get away from the, the replacement of the favorite thing that you had. So there is a place for, you know, keto bread and keto desserts and those kinds of things. But I think those are best used either as a crutch in the very, very beginning to stop you from eating the real thing, but the, the quicker you can get off of that and just eat clean food, the better. And then after you've been going for, I don't know, three, four, five, six months, and you want to have an actual sandwich, make some keto bread, it's not going to trigger those, um, those cravings nearly as bad. And the way I look at it is um, you can't defeat your demons if you still enjoy their company. So replacing one thing with something that's similar to it is not going to help you defeat that demon. You really need to get over that. So, um, and uh, Julie um, jumped in, and Julie's very experienced. Uh, Julie it was nice to meet you at um, the meetup. Um, and yeah, I, don't I remember Julie. Julie. Um, but uh, she she says not reading labels, and I just said in the in the keto in the chat with Jessica the other day. Um, you know, rule number one of keto is read the labels. Rule number two, read the labels. You, there's there's so much crap hidden in everything and then i added my third rule which is don't buy anything with a label and you're safe so um, now, when i was first started we did the uh carb manager and it was so fr i just wanted it is so frustrating when you start out and you have to track everything and you have to some of the stuff you can find but then maybe you don't have the brand so you have to enter all that stuff and sort of create that category oh, you and should watch my next video on how to add that simply and quickly in uh, card manager on my youtube channel if you haven't subscribed right. you but, i mean that was frustrating but the neat thing is uh what happens to you when you're doing it at first you're going to be really frustrated but as you do it you mentally really you get really into this 
and you start realizing the next morning when you're having that repeat breakfast that you usually have, it's a click away and you don't have to re-enter it again and you're building that data. Yeah, you're building. Everybody kind of eats the same thing. Right. And uh, it really gets better and it just really sets your mind to really focusing on yourself sort of and what you're putting in your body and reading it. And it starts to become fun. In the beginning, it's like, I hate this. You know, every now and then, you know? even when I was carnivore, every now and then I started tracking my carnivore diet. <clears throat> and here's a tip for those of you who are trying or thinking or are doing or thinking about carnivore. Um, I wanted to, um, Dr. Nally came in and he made it as simple as anybody I've heard is you basically want a one-to-one -one ratio of fat to protein by gram, not by the percentages that are based on calories, which is the, you know, four calories per uh, carb, four calories per uh, protein and nine per fat. No, not the, not the 70, 20, five, five that we normally do. Um, but one-to-one -one ratio. So, but it turns out if you have a steak, it's one to one ratio of protein to fat. If you have an egg, one to one within you know within a few tenths. So I would track how many I'd have four eggs in the morning with four ounces of steak and one ounce of cheddar cheese on top, real cheddar cheese. And then at lunch I'd have um, a burger and no bun with um, you know yes it's American cheese it was I was out but, you know whatever. Um, and then at night I'd have a ribeye. Okay. So I'd log all that in and then I'd look at the macros and it would be like four, three carbs because there are some carbs in eggs. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and um, then the, the protein and fat numbers, just the grams, the gram count, they were always within five, 10% of each other. So any real whole food, meat, pork, fish. Now chicken's a little bit different because it's a lot, got a lot more protein. And one thing that screwed me up is when I did eat that steak and shrimp that I put pictures up of, um, the shrimp is almost pure protein, uh, you know, okay. But I did that like once a week. Right. So, right. Uh, but, but it's just funny when you eat the things, the way they were created, you get one-to-one -one ratio protein to fat, which is exactly what you want. So you, then I'm like, okay, I don't need to track. Cause I know all I'm eating is eggs and, and beef, pork. And like I said, sometimes I, I put a little bit of cheddar cheese on my eggs in the morning. Um, but it, you know, I'm not eating cheese throughout the day. So um, I got a question. Yeah, you got one. Uh, that last cheeseburger you did, you had mm -hmm. some green chilies on there. Were mm -hmm. the were they hot hatch? Yeah, which is not necessarily the best that, thing to they, do. The you breakfast. had a good amount on there. Did you eat those? Yeah, I put like three chilies on each one, and uh, and it and and they were the extra hot variety. Um, Albertans, I don't know if you know this, but they have the mild band. Well, that's off to you, man. Uh, but also, you know, I've been eating chili since I was two. So, <laughs> Agnes, you did the whole thirty diet. How much different is keto? Uh, whole thirty is similar to keto, and if you're if if the whole thirty works for you, that's great because it's it's talking about eating uh, whole food and not um, uh, just stay away from the processed crap. But um, I don't think it's as strict as keto, and I, I looked into it. Oh, I don't know, over a year ago. So I don't remember all the details. Um, but if you have to sign up for anything and pay a subscription for anything, I'm not sure it's worth it because otherwise just go to the grocery store, store and spend the money you would have spent on that on food. Um, Ooh, but if that reminds working, me. working for you, that's, that's awesome. So what do you got, John? Uh, so since I've gone carnivore, um, I went a couple weeks into it, uh, went out and bought a whole bunch of meat and stuff, and I'm, I'm leaving Costco, and I went, sheesh, I just spent this much money on it or whatever, and, but that's it. I'm not buying other things. There's right. nothing else on the bill. So it's like normally I'm thinking about the grocery bill, and I'm like, ooh, that would have been a whole lot higher, and I've got a lot more meat, and this is going to last more than a week. Right. I went, oh, this is also well, very, it sounds expensive, but it, when you're not buying the other crap, it's very inexpensive. Right. And you're not eating out as much. You know, you can't get a lunch for under $10 anymore. I can get two steaks for $10 now, you know, or, you know, one big yep. one. Um, so, you know, it's kind of, it's where you put the money, you know. Also, I'm not buying an 18 pack of beer three times a week like I used to, you know. Um, there, there's just so many, it's kind of like what people do when they quit smoking. It's like, I got this extra money. 
Well, if you're not hitting the drive through, you know, go look at a McDonald's drive through. Don't go there, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you order, well, you got to. A quarter pounder meal, you know, and everybody, you know, upsizes it. So a large quarter pounder meal, it's going to be 10 bucks. Okay. Well, I just said that at Albertsons right now, ribeye steaks are on sale for five seventy seven a pound. Okay. So if you're like me, I can eat a pound of beef and it did up a minute. So let's say it's, you know, I don't know, 12, 10 ounces uh, minus the bone. Um, I can eat all that, but maybe you can't. So that's two meals, you know, and a lot of times I have leftover steak. And then, like I said earlier, that steak gets chopped up and put in my eggs. That's boom. And, you know, yeah, I do like the um, pasture raised eggs and they're expensive. But I also know that when the grocery store eggs are on sale for 98 cents a dozen, I'm buying them and I'm stocking up on them. Right. So it doesn't have to be expensive. And the fact that you're not spending so much money on the crap gives you more. And again, this is, you know, this is where I'm going to preach a little bit, John. And I know this is supposed to be you and I talking, but I can't help myself is <laughs> buying the powders, potions, pills, all that other nonsense that they're charging you 50 bucks for and just go buy your food. And I said the other night, that's your medication. Don't complain to me about how expensive Kerrygold butter is and then ask me which brand of exogenous ketones to buy for 50 bucks. Use that 50 bucks to just go buy food. And that's all it is. And um, there, you know, there are examples of the need for exogenous ketones. I just posted a live with uh, Dr. Barry and Dr. Boz in the group. Go check it out um, about the specific times that those are very, very useful and they're helpful tools. But for the average guy just trying to lose some weight and get into shape, they're, they're useless and you're wasting your money and you should uh, you should just spend that in the meat department and the produce department. So um, I got I got a question real quick. If you don't need to grab one, do you have one you got to answer? No, just uh, no, we're good. Julie, Julie agrees and says just eat real food. And Julie knows Julie's been doing this a lot longer than we have. And um, mm -hmm. You know, been very successful. So, uh, Julie, if you'd ever like to do a live chat in here, please uh, let me know because uh, I'm trying to get some uh, other opinions and other perspectives than just mine in in the group. So uh, I know you uh, you're kind of a rock star, and uh, anytime you'd like to do a live chat, please let me know. I'll reach out to you privately. Thanks. Uh, what'd you have, John? All right. So fasting. Yeah. Yvonne was quizzing me today about fasting and how much fasting I'm doing. Now that I'm carnivore, it, it, it naturally happens. You just you even, yes. You know, fasting. But like today, um, it was 1130 or something like that. And I was talking to Yvonne about business and this and that. And I'm like, uh, getting ready to go on a task or whatever. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to get going. I'm going to eat lunch real quick because I'm actually approaching 24 hours without eating anything. And so we got into the subject of how much fasting, okay, is there anything about fasting that is bad? And I, the only thing I, I got that I know of about fasting that could be bad, that I know of is when I would fast, I would use sweeteners. And so I was knocking myself out of the fast anyway. So I wasn't really fasting. And other than that, do you have anything to say? I'm going to stop you right there because you may or may not have because you may or may not be a, a person who's sensitive to the cephalic insulin response. I don't know. I mean, that's unless we tested your insulin before and after having a sweet taste, we wouldn't know. And unfortunately, there is no home test for insulin. Um, but you're right. It's it's best to avoid those things. Um and Michelle, I just got your message, and you're very funny. Um, <laughs> what what happened? It was, it was sent on another device. Never mind. Yeah, I, I realize that, but this is supposed to be uh, a you and I chat, and we have to pretend like no one else is watching. So what what was that? Italian, because apparently I'm doing too much of this. <laughs> I'm talking with my hands. Uh, okay. Okay, so can you do, like, let's say I, I, I did a seven-day fast. Right. Bad or good for me? Um, it depends on how you feel. Um, talk to, uh, in our group, we have uh, David uh, Bakai. Um, and he's a bass player for Dead West. And 
Is that that's an emitter band, Dave? Right. Anyway, he'll hopefully he'll see this. All um, right. Or electric. Uh, <laughs> he actually plays it upside down and backwards and standing on his head. Apparently. Oh. Um, no, he's right. he's pretty cool. Um. He does five to seven day fasts often. Ooh. Okay, and I he's feel so epic after, when I do twenty four hours. After the second day, second day is always the hardest, and then it gets easier. That's what everybody tells me. I haven't done it. Um, but anybody who wants to look into fasting, whether it's intermittent fasting, alternate day fasting, or extended fasting, you really got to spend the ten or twenty bucks on the complete guide to fasting by Jimmy Moore and Dr. Jason Funk. Uh, they're the experts on it, and they go into each variety of fasting. Whether it's just all you know intermittent fasting, skip breakfast, no big deal, 16, 18 hours. Um, OMAD, one meal a day, you just every 24 hours you eat something. And then there's you know getting into the 36, you know 48, 72s, you know all, all the longer times. Um, do you have that book? I do, I do. I think I have, I have the Kindle version though, unfortunately. Oh. I don't know if I can share a Kindle with you. Can I have your yeah. iPad then? Um, but the Kindle version, I, I, yeah, I have it on my iPad. Um, but it, the Kindle version is like ten bucks, so you know, okay, it's not a big deal. All right, I'll get it. Definitely, definitely download that. And no, if you feel now that, like I said, the, so the second day feels like utter crap, and uh, then apparently it gets easier, and where you just you have even more energy. And Dr. Fung talked about that in one of the talks I talked about, talking about ancestral people. Um, you know, if if our energy level went down after two or three days of not eating, we'd have died in a cave because we hadn't right. killed the deer or the mastodon or whatever. What happens is after two or three days, your energy level actually goes up to go get that, to go, you know, refeed yourself. So after that second day, generally you have an energy increase and no, you're not burning muscle uh, at that early stage. You know, we've all seen pictures of concentration camps and things like that, but those people were starved on a continuous basis for months at a time. Um, so we're talking about, you know, and, and the other thing Dr. Uh, Fung points out is the one thing that the three main religions in the world can agree on, Christianity, uh, Islam, and Buddhism, the one thing they can agree on is fasting. They all prescribe fasting. Um, you know, for various lengths of time. Yeah. It's not because they're trying to kill their disciples, you know, it's because it's a, it's a cleanse and it, it sharpens the mind and it does all kinds of great things. So, um, so I wouldn't be afraid of fasting. Wait until you're ready for it. Um, intermittent fasting comes naturally, like you said, because you can wake up and just go, I'm not hungry. And it's okay to not be hungry. You feel like you should be hungry because I didn't eat. Uh, or it's it's morning and this is when I always eat, you know, um, so it can take a while to get your head around that and it still does for me sometimes where I feel like I should eat something. It's like, I'm not really hungry. So um, yeah. that's it. So, well, um, so are you going to add some veg back in now that you're past your 30 days or are you uh, um, yeah, kind of no, stick? I'm, with I'm, probably, I'm, probably I'm probably primarily carnivore now. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, cooking you know a bunch of veg right now i've got a ribeye ready to go on a grill and oh about right now we're gonna have to cut this off i like to finish eating but it's already it's 605 cooking a ribeye oh. i only i only have one sorry i can't come over oh okay. you have your own ribeye i got a bunch of ribeyes i gotta see what we're doing now yvonne actually went to costco um yeah all right so all right uh well, let's do this again, and we'll try to keep it a little more informal. I, I mean, it's it's hard not to know that people are watching sometimes because when we're, you know, hey guys, if we're ever doing one of these impromptu, unscheduled FaceTimes, um, and um, a swear word or two slips out, that's just what happens. Did we swear? I don't think we did this time. But I'm just going to say, as we get more relaxed doing this, it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for the swearing. All right, so I think the uh, the next phase, as I'm I'm going to stay carnivore, I'm going to stay not doing the sweeteners. I'm going to uh, stay. 
I'm going to be at a minimum on the dairy. I, what I found out is, you know, me and my sweet tooth is I am drinking coffee with creamer. It's still like a bitter. Ooh, this isn't easy. It's not that sugary sweet that I'm used to. Whipping cream? No, heavy cream. Yeah, I mean heavy, heavy whipping cream. Okay, so you're not using like the powdered creamer crap or anything like that. No, 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 no. Okay, so okay, so we have me whipping cream, and and that's okay because technically that's carnivore. Just some people are sensitive to it. And if you're getting the results you want, then you're doing fine. You know, if you can't do it, if again because it's got some protein in it, it, it it's 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 not something you should do when you're fasting. Oh, for autophagy, we remember we were talking about the autophagy. Okay. Um, in the last chat. Um, if your goal is autophagy, you really need to not do that. And uh, let me show you what I, I want. I got this out because I wanted to. This is my um, latest, greatest um, product that I think I can endorse. I mean, they're not paying me. I had to buy them. But I, I'm really happy with it. And it's called um, True Lemon. And they, these little packets, kind of like a Splendid packet. Huh. And it literally is just crystallized dehydrated lemon. There is no additives, no maltodextrin, no sweetener. Um, let's see, the ingredients are crystallized lemon, period. So there's nothing in there. There's no anti-caking agents. There's nothing like that. I got this box of 100 on Amazon for 10 or 12 bucks. And here's a, here's a hip tip. If you go into most Circle Ks now, they have these by the iced tea in these packets, and you can swipe one or two. Um, but add this to your water. And uh, for me, it just makes water more palatable. I'm not a big water drinker, at least before doing the carnivore thing. But when I decided to cut out, you know, um, diet sodas and things like that and um, iced tea, we're going to have to have a talk about iced tea. We'll do that for a separate chat. But unfortunately, it seems that in a lot of people, iced tea can actually raise your insulin and install you. Um, oh, okay. But uh, these, it's true lemon. It is literally just crystallized lemon. Um, I, I think it's um, safe. Uh, you do want to uh, count it as probably one card per count, uh, one card per packet. But if you're doing carnivore, there's no point in carn. You know, you're not gonna eat ten, 10 of those in a day. You might have, you know, I, I have a big, I have a big hydro flask. I put one of those in there, and I do two hydro flasks a day. So it, it's it's negligible. But I feel pretty good about this product. As far as you know, the con, you know, the, the uh, ingredients in it, um, it's just you can't, you know, the total carbohydrate count on the back says less than one gram, which we all know means counted as at least one uh, because it, it can round down. Uh, apparently, they have uh, let's see, everything's backwards here. True lime, is yeah, so yeah, yeah and, uh, Cheryl I don't know Robert what, Gibson. orange might have a sweeter taste to it, um, which might trigger some uh, insulin response. But for me, I always like lemon and tea and water and stuff like that anyway. But it was always a, kind of a hassle to have a fresh orange or a let me try to say lemon around. You know, you can't keep a fresh lemon at your desk and have it stay good for any period of time. So I throw a handful of those in my drawer and uh, I found them to be it just makes the big hydro flask full of water taste better. So uh, yeah. so right. I'm going to go grill a steak. Yeah. Um, for those who are uh, seeing this on a replay, um, if you have any questions about anything we've talked about, you know, drop them in the comments below. I did put this into the um, uh, Easy Keto with Arizona Dave community, which is the public page, and shared it to the private group. If you're not in the private group, uh, consider joining. We, we post some stuff in there that's not out on the community page. Um, but this also, because it's out there, is shareable. So if you if we happen to touch on anything that you think somebody needs to see, feel free to share it anywhere at your will. Uh, John, what do you season your steak with? Salt. Redmond salt. It? Just it. Not just Redmond salt. Yep. Redmond's kosher. Green green chilies salt. on it? Uh, no, I'm going to save those for a cheeseburger tomorrow for lunch. All right. Yeah, actually, I, I think what I'm actually going to do tomorrow, even though it's not really stew or, or chilly weather, is I'm going to make some pork green chili stew tomorrow. Because I've got all these hatch chilies and I've got some pork, and I think I'm gonna make some. Pork. How many chilies did you buy? What'd you? Uh, well, I, last, last year I had them order me an entire box, which was like 25 pounds. Um, this year I've only been buying them out of the bin, so I've only got, I don't know, a couple pounds in there. But tomorrow I might okay. go over 
since I'm going on vacation in just under two weeks, I think I might go buy a crap load and spend the weekend roasting them and freezing them so that I have them for the year. Um, okay. There's that. But all right, guys, uh, have a great weekend. We do have uh, some really cool um, live chats coming up with some special guests. Like the other night, we had Jessica. She was awesome. Uh, yeah, that, was, that was a good one. That was a good chat. We've got some more guests coming up. Um, and some I can, well, I'm not going to even say their names yet, but I've got three or four or five lined up. And uh, I'm excited about having them on and uh, hope you can join us when they're here. And I'll obviously, you know, we'll, we'll put the heads up up and it's out there. So, hey, John, I'll talk to you later. Have a awesome right. weekend. And later. We'll see you later. All right, guys. Thanks.